So, to give you a general sense of what it is, you're taking a geometric kind of angular form and attaching it to an organic form that you're going to coil build. I'm going to show you how to slab build and how to coil build now, but I want you all to get a little experiment with what the clay feels like. So, go ahead and open your bag up. Take out a handful of clay. What's the handful look like? Kind of like this. It's a really good idea. Keep track of your clay. You don't want to leave it open, like fully open when you're not using it. What I want you to do is just kind of get a feel for the material. And you can do that by making a pinch spot. So what I want you to do is just take this clay, that chunk of clay, and kind of manipulate it in your hands. And I just want you to get to see how thin you can make this clay. So I'm just kind of pinching it out, making it thinner and thinner. Kind of making a tortilla of sorts. And once I've got that, then I can throw it out. All right, and this is what I mean by that. So I throw it down on the table. There's canvas on all your tables. The canvas absorbs water from your clay. So what I do is you're not looking to wind up and throw it really hard on the table. What I'm looking to do is when I throw it down the table, this front edge catches on the canvas and then I pull it towards myself. So and what I'd like you to do is just experiment with seeing how thin you can get it going to wrinkle, it's going to crack, until it gets so thin it actually starts to break. I kind of wrinkle the clay up, because it's getting so thin, so you can actually get surfaces out of there, textures. But I want you to be observant of what the material does. We're going to get so dry and brittle that it'll break apart. And that's where we'll take those remnants This is going to be where you're going to keep your slurry and your water for attaching clay together. The pieces of clay, when they're still kind of wet, and I can wedge them back together just by kind of putting it in between my hands and pushing like so. And that does kind of a wedging of that little piece of clay. You are not going to want to make the clay this thin to make the objects that you're going to be working on. You could. But it's going to be wicked hard to work with. All right. So make sure that your slabs are a little bit thicker, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So here's what I need for a demo for the last class. So you got a slab piece here. You got a coil piece there. I'm going to give you a quick run through of how to do that. And here's the thing: this clay is still wet enough, and I've already worked with it twice now that I can just crush it back up and I can wedge it, right? So you want to wedge your clay, the stuff that's coming right out of the bag, really easy. You can just kind of cut a slab out of there with a wire tool, no problem. There's no air pockets in here, it's ready to go. But what I just did is put a whole bunch of air in here. How do I know that? If I cut this open, you're going to see those little air pockets. Anyone guess what happens to those? blow up in the kiln. So we want to eliminate those as much as possible. So two ways of wedging your clay. One is this. Put the clay. This is specifically a wedging table. This isn't a work table. This is where you can come and wedge clay. All right. I'm just working here because it's central. So I can take the clay and wedge it. And when I do that, all you're looking to do is pull the clay back, push it back down upon itself, so you get this kind of wrinkle in there. 
right? And you're just working the air pockets out of there. Another way of doing it, depending on how dry your clay is, sometimes you might have some wet pieces, sometimes you might have some drier pieces, I can actually go like this. Use my wire tool. So I just layered up four pieces, one over the other. I take those pieces again. There's eight layers. There's 16 layers. More layers. And what I can do is I can lay it one on top of the other and then kind of mush it back up. And when I cut this open, nothing. No air pockets. So that's what you're looking for, okay? Just do a quick demo and slab building. So what I want you to do, this is your first time working with this material, it might dry out too much, might, all sorts of things are going to come into play, all right? So I'm using this rolling pin to give myself a nice even slab, but I usually use it for a preliminary. get a specific thickness. Put that slab there. That'll give me a pretty uniform thickness. And again, I'm not using a lot of force. I'm letting it hit the table, and then I pull it. All right, and how thick do you want your slabs to be? But right now, this is about a quarter, maybe a half an inch thick. All right, that's pretty good. Got a metal rib. All right, the metal rib is used to compact the surface of your clay. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking the metal rib, I'm going in a couple of different directions, and then I take the slab, flip it over. I do the same thing to both sides. That's just going to make it so that this clay is a little more flexible as you make the object that you want to make. All right? Square object. This is usually the quickest way to do that. Now the one thing you need to always know that you have to do, whenever you're attaching two pieces of clay, you have to slip and score. I could go through and put this entire object together, the only thing holding it together is moisture, and it will fall apart. So what I'm gonna do, here's the bottom, and I always like when people put things together and they go like, oh, I gotta put that, hold that up like that, right? You don't have to do that. You should always put up a corner first, all right? So what I would do when I put that corner up, I take a little bit of water, a little bit of slurry. I put it along the edges where I'm going to make that attachment. And again, I'm kind of pretending here to do that so it doesn't take forever for me to demo for you. I put some slip on first. I score up the surfaces, I put it together, and when I put it together, I want to reinforce it a little bit, really press it in, make some ceramic Velcro. Yes, we don't have all day. So I'm going along on each seam and I'm compacting them together, pushing them, adding pressure. I actually want to hear a little like like squishing noise so that I know that the ceramic Velcro is attaching together and I'm pushing down on all of those seams and now it looks like I'm 
I'm cutting the top off and making it a really boring, boring form. Yes, a cube is the most boring form you can make, but that's kind of what this is about. So maybe don't make a cube when you make something. And I'm working kind of intuitively here so that I can work quickly for you, but I want you to sketch these ideas out first. All right. So here's a bunch of clay scraps. What am I gonna do with those? I wanna kind of conserve this stuff. So what I would do is I'd take all these slabs, these kind of pieces, and I'd do the whole wedging thing again with a small piece of clay. I just kind of put them all back together. And I'm gonna make a top for that. I'm flipping this over and I say that because this is pretty wet for me to be doing this with but I'm going to do it anyways so with the slab building I'm going to encourage you to think of it like a clay balloon and by that I mean you want to trap a pocket of air in here So again, I'd go around the top of this, I'd slip and score it, I'd reinforce that seam, and once I've created a good ceramic balloon, this object is going to keep its shape. But as we talked about earlier, what happens with air pockets in clay? They blow up. So we want to make sure that we're either going to cut this object up or make a hole. Here's my geometric shape. Not very dynamic. For your coil build form, you're going to want to make a slab of clay. When you've got the slab of clay, cut out the bottom of the shape that you'd like to use in coil building. Take the leftover clay, make a large, thick coil. You're wedging at the same time that you're making this coil, so don't worry about air pockets. And then... And then I roll that out. So that's a good size coil right there. And there's a few ways you can do this. And your coils are going to look flat and wonky, and they're not going to be perfect. It's okay. No big deal, not a problem, all right? We're looking to make a form with those, all right? That's right, you don't have to have perfect coils. After all, you'll just be using them to make a coil for. What you wanna make sure of is that you take a little bit of water or slip, put it onto the piece, and then you're going to score it. Once you've done that slipping and scoring, you can add the, uh, where's the speed? I got it, this is going too fast. Uh, it's scoring, uh, you score, right. And then you push the two together. Uh, uh, the next one, you, I'm scoring now, I'm scoring. Uh, where's the speed button to make it go, uh, okay, faster. Then, oh, slip, slip, and I am cut that off. And I put that on there and I fill that little hole in. And just remember, you want to make sure that you are, okay, uh, slipping, first and then scoring so slip and score and once you've slipped and scored when you attach your coils together make sure to press down hard so that there is no light that you can see in between the coils you want to make them nice and tight so that they stick and then when you've gotten to the point where your form is done you can of course make a pinch pot. Here I am pinching, I'm pinching, I'm pinching, I'm pinching. I'm probably going to have really bad arthritis. Okay, I'm pinching, I'm pinching, I'm pinching, I'm pinching, and I'm making the form so that its walls are about the same thickness as the coil object that I'm putting it on top of. So remember, you don't have to build everything with coils or with slabs. You can fill spots in as you go along. Always slip and score, as it says on the screen. And make sure that when you slip and score, you then adhere whatever you're putting together nice and tight. Compact and secure all of your seams. That's right. You're going to have seams in between the objects that you're putting together. 
So remember, when you're smoothing and connecting, that your wood tool provides more pressure than your finger. Your finger is like cushiony, okay? So you make sure you're using a wooden tool because that's going to make it easier to make the attachments that you go through and make them smoother. That's right, smoother. Wow, this, I'm really going fast. This is as fast as I think I could ever go, ever, but it's kind of very, very much so, uh, just so you don't have to sit and watch this thing for 45 minutes and trying to make it fast. So here we are, there's your coil-built organic form, or the one that I built, and then, where is it? Here it comes, the slab-built geometric form, there it is. There's the two forms. Once you've got the two of yours made, you're going to create a dynamic composition. How will you create a dynamic composition with your forms? And with, I have to shut the recording off now. Oh, okay.